Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 21 of my web design and programming tutorial. Today, because Marcus asked for it, I'm going to show you how to build a pretty ironclad login script that you could use on your website. Here I'm going to introduce how to use sessions securely, show you how to create multiple different tokens to heighten security. Really, there's going to be a lot of things in this tutorial that we've covered previously, just taken up to the next step. Well, I went in and I put in some of the HTML code just to keep from having to type that in. And up here, of course, first off, we need to initialize a session. And I talked in part 20 about what sessions were. And you do it with the session start function. And then all this code is available in newthinktank.com, by the way. It's all free. You can download it and there's a link to it in the underbar. Here, I'm going to call a file that will connect me to my database. Plus on top of that, it's going to include some security functions that are gonna help scrub all the input people enter. And that's all you have to do. There, you just started a new session. Now all of your information is going to be stored on the server, except for, of course, the session ID, which is a cookie. Then what we got to do in PHP code, again, before any of the HTML, is confirm the user ID and password entered are valid. And here we're going to do that using regular expressions. So again, if is set host submitted. Here I'm just checking to make sure that this value submitted has a value, which the only way that's going to occur is if the user submitted information on a form. And if you forget how this works, down here you can see the form information, and here is where I'm giving submitted a value of true, again from previous tutorial. Okay, so if they did, click the submit button, and I got here. What I'm going to do is run a regular expression on this, Craig, match. Regular expressions are your defense in regards to securing your website. And here I'm going to say, all right, well, I know that my user ID that they are going to enter is either going to be a capital or a lowercase z, or it's going to be numbers. And that's it. That's all I allow. So that's all I'm going to say I accept. And it's going to be between 8 to 20 characters in length. That's what this regular expression says. And I'm going to run strip slashes on it. And then I'm going to trim off any white space. And you really do need to go through all this security if you do not want somebody to break into your website. And I'm by no means saying this is 100% secure. I'm just saying that a person would have to pull their hair out to get through all of the security that I'm putting here. I personally don't believe anything is ever secure 100%. Post. And here all I'm doing is getting the user ID that they entered. And oh, by the way, this is what it looks like when it's done on this gigantic mammoth thing. And all of these links over here will change based off the person being logged in or not. So what this is, is it's just checking the input that is put into that little box right there. And it's checking that it is valid. Close that off. Else, I'm going to set the value for the user ID equal to false. And then I'm gonna to echo to screen that they entered the information incorrectly. And I'm just typing whatever into this. Okay, so now I know that the user ID entered is going to be valid. So now what I need to do is actually do almost the exact same thing to the password. So I'm actually going to copy this code. Copy. Paste. Don't need this part. And then all I'm going to do here is change this from user ID to password or pass as I call it. Because I have the user ID and the password are both constrained with the same regular expression. I want them to be equally complicated. And then on top of that, I'm going to throw in my CAPTCHA system. And remember from last time, I just copied and pasted that because I got all that information from Google. And I'm going to do that again here to save me time. And you can see right here, I put in my CAPTCHA code. And this is going to check that the CAPTCHA information was entered properly. And again, remember, you have to put a private key inside of here. And that's all I need to do in regards to validating the user ID password and also validating that the CAPTCHA was entered properly. Now I need to query my database. So what I'm going to do here is check that there is a positive in user ID, meaning it passed all my tests. Same thing for password and same thing for the weird CAPTCHA system. And to give you an idea of how well CAPTCHA systems work, on my website, people used to try to hack my forum, I would guess on average over 40 times a day. And after I installed a CAPTCHA system, they've proven it pretty much given up. And then we got to create our query for our database. And it's just going to be select user ID, first name, user ID, password from users, where user ID is equal to, make sure you put these quotes in here, and password is equal to SHA, which is for encryption, right like that. So that's the query I'm going to be issuing. And then into result, I'm going to put the results of this query or trigger error. And of course, you could put a more friendly response. 
just typing in everything kind of out of my head here as I go. So if MySQL affected rows, and all I'm doing here is checking that the number of rows that were affected by this query is going to be equal to one because there can only be one user ID. So that has to be the way that it comes back to me. Otherwise, there's something amiss. And if that is so, I'm going to get the query results and assign them to the array named row, right like that. And this function just frees up memory if I perform a large query, but I just always use it just in case I need it. And then what I'm going to do is assign to the session called first name the value that was shot back and is stored in the one position from the query. First name, first name, zero, one. So that's where that comes from. All this information will be stored on the server. I'm just going to copy that and put user ID in here. And user ID comes from where? The second position, two, zero, one, two. So that's where the user ID comes from. So I'm going to assign that to session information. And here, I'm going to add a second layer of protection because every single time a person logs in, I'm going to force them to create another random token. It's going to be a random number between those two guys I just plugged in there. And then I'm going to query the database again. So I'll just call this query two. And because I changed that token, I want to update the users table and set token ID equal to token ID, where user ID is equal to the value that I have stored in this session. And remember the quotes go on the outside, the single quotes here. Okay, so there I created a second query that's going to create another layer of security with a second token. I also got a question, I can't remember from who, and it was in regards to how to set up a second token to add that layer of security. I'm going to SQL query, and I'm going to send it query two. And then I need to save the value of that second token in the session value for that token. And then to add another layer of security, I'm going to call session regenerate ID. And what this is going to do is get rid of the previous session cookie and create a brand new one. This is going to protect you from what's called session fixation. And here I'm going to show you something I haven't done before. I'm going to load a page by using the header function followed by, in my case, localhost forward slash login forward slash index dot php. So what this is going to do is it's going to force, once you get in this part of the script, for your browser to jump to this new location right here. And then, of course, I want to call in MySQL close to close the database connection and exit to close the script altogether. Okay, there's a ton of stuff right there. And then I need to just close off everything else. So else no match would have been made in this circumstance. So I'm going to echo to screen and I'm actually going to scroll up and grab this guy instead. That's a little bit nicer and paste that in there. Okay, so that's going to report that they entered the information incorrectly. MySQL, close, because it didn't get to this previously. Close database, close the script. And you definitely want to close the script every single time, otherwise it'll continue to run in the background. And then we're going to close that part off. And then you're just going to have to kind of trust me here. There's one more of these guys. So copy this, paste, doink. All right, and that is the end of the submission part of the website. Now what we got to do is come in here and define this guy right here. What different links are gonna show up based off of current login status. So I'm gonna to have to close off my PHP script since I am now going to get into the HTML section. So I just did that right there. And I do do this a lot. I create the HTML part and then wherever the PHP code goes, I actually write what needs to go in there. So what I'm gonna do is I need to change my links based off of session information. No problem. I'm gonna do that. Come in here and go if is set underscore session first name now i know a first name is set that means there's an active session so i'm going to greet this person by addressing them by their first name and if it's not set i'm just going to close off that h1 tag and just have welcome show up on the screen and then i'm going to check if the user id is currently set in the session and i'm going to check here that we're not on the log out screen and the reason why is the only way somebody's going to be sent to it is if they are trying to log out. And you're going to see in the next tutorial, I want to show you how to create a log out screen, how exactly that works. It's not equal to, okay? So what this is saying is it's grabbing the current location that you are in, what, what page you are currently on, and it's subtracting 10 from that, which is the number of letters right here, and it's checking that it's not equal to that. So that's what's going on with this guy. So what this is doing is checking that user ID is set and that we currently are not on the logout PHP page. Hopefully that's not confusing. If it is, 
Leave a question below, I'll explain it further. And then what we're going to do is to find these links based off of where they are. And then I'm just going to copy this, paste this in here, and then type in change password, and call this change password, and then end that echo. Else, they currently are not logged in, so I'm going to put up a whole new set of different links. And so I'm going to copy this. Actually, I'm going to copy both lines, paste, and then I'm just going to change this to register, and then type in register, and then change this to good login, which is the name of this script, and type in login to count. Delete that. This forgot password. Forgot password. What I'll need to do is close that out. And then that's that part of the PHP script. And all of the rest of this information you've already seen. This is where they're entering user ID and password. Here's where I constrain maximum length. Here's where I call the caption information that we got from Google. And here is how I end the entire page. And that is all that goes into making an extremely secure little login script. And here I'll show you exactly what goes into it to log in. So you come here. P. Paulson 1. See, it's kind of a funky user ID that's not common. That's a great thing. Why is it that way? Because we forced them to do it that way. And then I have to see if I can also type in the capture right. I think that's right. And it also has a little sound thing. It'll play words to you. Hit login. And you can see here, welcome Paul. It found me and it knows who I am. So there's an extremely secure login script. If you have any questions or comments, or if you have an idea on how to make it even more secure, I know I could do secure socket layers and so forth and so on. But if you have any other ideas aside from that, feel free to leave them below. And if I click on log out, it deletes the session information. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create one of those as well as a secure forgotten password script. Till next time.